In this video, we are going to be making the Freddy's Power Cut Jump Scare as shown in this overview. I do play this section fast for pacing reasons. It will spawn Freddy and then play music and then a delay which leads to a jump scare. You can see I also added the flashing eyes too, I use the techniques from another video I did a few weeks ago about objects reacting to audio which I show again in this video. To begin with, I am going create the power down effect before Freddy appears. I start by importing the audio SFX for the power going down, you can get this online. Right click this and create a cue out of it. I like using cues as it allows me to edit the audio in it later or if I wanted to add spatialization. Open it and if you do have an attenuation asset, you can just place it in this box. I think I created this asset a while back. Save and we can go to our game mode, this is where we deal with all of our power system. Find your adjust power function and go through this line of code to refresh your memory on what it does. Next, towards the end of the code, you can delete the delay, open level and input disable nodes. After this node, we will remove all animatronics, play the power down SFX and spawn in Freddy. This is optional but first, search for a get all actors of class. Select master animatronics class. Add a for each loop, and add a destroy actor to the end. Make sure the target is connected to the array element. Now on completed, search for play sound at 2D or location. Select the power down SFX queue. I used a location but it is unnecessary for this sound. I use get player pawn and search for get actor location and connect that to the location. Next add a delay, this is the delay of the power SFX. I want it to be fully completed before moving on to the next task of spawning Freddy. You can find how long the SFX is by opening your imported SFX and there should be a duration line under developers category. This audio is around 6 seconds, back in the delay. I enter 6 seconds. Now to spawn Freddy, go to your map and if you have done the jump scare tutorial, we made an actor called a BP spawner. They are just normal actor, I did add an arrow component to know the direction. I have one in the map for the normal jump scares and we can copy another one for where Freddy stands. It uses a tag based system to know where the animatronic needs to go. Tags are used for any actor or components and can be found in the details panel. The old one for the jump scare itself has a tag called jump scare point. Take a moment to understand this concept. Anyway, I am going to copy and paste another one for where Freddy will stand, I can just move it here. I can also give it a tag called Freddy power cut. Once placed, go back to your game mode. After the delay, we are going to spawn Freddy. So first we get the spawn location that we just placed. First search for get all actors of class with tag. This is where use our Freddy tag. The tag has to be spelled correctly. Then select your spawner class. Now to a get from here, since we only have one spawner with this tag, we can just simply get the first element. From there, you can get the actor location and then we get the arrow. From that arrow, we can get world rotation. I search for a make transform. I can just connect the location and rotation here. Now we can call the spawn actor from class. Select the jump scare actor class that you created in the jump scare video. This class manages our mesh and animation for the jump scare. Make sure it always spawns. Connect the transform nodes together. Now since only Freddy spawns the jump scare, I can simply select the Freddy mesh and animation in these slots. However you can change it to other meshes or make other manual changes. Compile and save. Next, we are going to create an enum that can tell our jump scare animatronic what to do. Right click and search for an enum. Call it jump scare modes. In here, just add two modes. I am going to call the first one normal, the next one is called power cut. Save it and we can go to our jump scare actor to do the code. Open it and add a new variable. I called it jump scare mode. I change the variable type to the enum that we created to. 
Compile and go to your event graph. We want to change the begin play. Move your delay and play from start away from the code. Get your new variable and we want to drag from this and search for a switch node. This allows the code to take different paths. Connect normal to the delay. First I am making some changes to the old code. First go to your audio and find auto activate and disable that. I want control over what the sound is and when it plays. Drag out your audio and search for play. This will play the audio after. Next, for the power cut, code is different. First, get your animatronic mesh and importantly, set your relative location to 0,0,0. .0. We want to make sure it is not in the ground or offset. Next search for add a custom event. We want to name this power cut or something similar. We can add this custom event after the set relative location. Now back in this event, I will first create the overall steps before I put in details like flashing lights and SFX. Get your player pawn and I have this on jump scare interface. You would have created it in another video linked here. All this is in the player blueprint and it deals with disabling input and make sure you face the front. Connect your interface and after, search for a delay. This can one second. This next bit is the same as spawning but instead of spawning, I want to set actor location to the center jump scare point. Get your actor of class with tag. Select the spawner. Now the tag is not the same as before. Go back to your map. The spawner that I am talking about is this one in the office, the main jump scare point. We need to get this tag, copy that tag and then continue. Now search for another get node. Get the actor location and actor rotation. Instead of spawning, we can search for set actor transform. Instead of a make transform, I right click this node and select split structure which is an alternative. Connect location and rotation. Now I want to copy the nodes from the normal switch path and just paste it down here. That is mostly the generic segment completed. We can go into the specific details now. This is all before the on jump scare event. First, the eye material. Search for your skeletal mesh and search for get material. The material index is the index of your eye slot for your mesh, for Freddy, it is 2. Next from the event, get a create dynamic material instance. This allows us to change the values of our eye material since we did have an emission scalar parameter on it. Make sure all is connected. Promote it to variable like DMI underscore eye material. We created it but now we need to set it to our mesh. Get your variable and your skeletal mesh. Do a set material and connect it. Make element index the same as your eye material index. Now the Freddy music. In your content browser, import the music that Freddy plays. Open it and find envelope. Importantly find enable amplitude envelope analysis. There is a video I did on this topic, but this allows us to get data we need from the audio to make accurate flashing eyes. Also as usual, right click it and turn it into a cue. I just set its attenuation so the players can hear it from the correct direction. Back in the code, get your audio sound effect and do a set sound. We can select our Freddy music cue. Next call the play node. Add a delay here. I set it to 20 seconds, it's similar to the games. The music plays and then we get jump scared after a while. Now I don't want the music to play during jump scare, so I get the sound effect component and call a fade out node after the on jump scared event. I can have this fade for under a second. Now clean up your nodes and we are nearly done. We haven't told the material to flash yet or fix some bugs. Also really important that before the final play node, we want to get our sound effect and set it to the normal jump scare sound. I don't have a sound effect currently, so I pick a random one. Now for the eyes. In your sound effect details panel, if you scroll down to the bottom, you will find a few green buttons. 
Click on Audio Playback Percent. Now get your sound effect and search for a node called Get Cooked Envelope Data. Now we can get our material variable and call a node called Set Scalar Parameter. Now the eye material may not be bright enough and the emission doesn't work good as a light source, so I am also going to add a point light to this. Attach it to the skeletal mesh. Play with the intensity and other values, I make the radius quite small so it only lights up the face. Now get your spotlight and after the scalar parameter, do set intensity. So now we need just give both of these nodes their values. From the cooked data, get a multiply node. The value is 5 but I do increase it. Connect and change parameter name to the one in the material that you made for the eyes. I called mine's just E. Next make another multiply node but this time the values in the thousands. Connect that. Now some bug fixes. First thing we missed was this variable. We haven't set it yet. On your variable, make it public and expose it to the spawn actor nodes. This allows us to change it back in the game mode. Go to your game mode, right click and refresh the spawn actor node. You can set this variable to the power cut value. Next back in the jump scare actor, I mess around with the lights a bit more and increase the values. Now you can compile and test it. It should work, message me if it doesn't, I do understand this was probably complex to follow hence why I have taken so long to upload this specific video. On Discord, I can help you a lot more with screenshots too. I hope you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing and sharing. See you next time.